everybody, welcome to the Black Sheep Props channel. I'm Steve, and I'm here to teach you the tips, tools, techniques, and materials for building your very own super cool EVA foam props. Now, if you're a member of the Black Sheep Props family, you know that in between super cool prop builds, we do tips videos, which is what we're doing now. Right now, we're gonna look at this little baby, the Dremel. In this episode, EVA Foam Dremeling Basics, we're going to take a look at this little beast, the Dremel, and what it is, what it does, uh, how it works, and what we're going to mainly use it for. And we use it on almost every single build. Um, so we're just going to do a basic overview just so you can begin to get your head around what this tool is and why you need it and uh, how you can start getting used to it. Um, so, if you're ready to hit it, uh, let's take a basic look at one of our favorite tools we use for making something. All right, this is a Dremel. This is a rotary tool, which means it's got a little motor in it and the end rotates and it has a grinding bit on the end. Actually, you can swap out many different grinding bits on the end. This is a kick butt little power tool that we use for grinding the edges of foam so that we don't have square edges. And what I mean is this, when you have a perfectly square edge on a piece of foam, most of the time you're going to want to use your Dremel to soften the edge, to round the edge over. It gives it a really nice detailed finish. It's not that you can't leave it on there square, but most of the time you're going to want to round off the edges and so you use this bad boy, the Dremel. You're gonna notice there's an arrow on the case right there pointing that direction, which means that's the direction that the wheel spins. And the reason that's important is when you turn this on and the wheel is spinning this direction, that's the direction you want to go as you're grinding. So when you turn it on, you're gonna want to go the direction of the arrow like this. Now when you first start doing this, it's going to feel awkward, you're not going to quite know how to hold it, and you're going to notice when this wheel starts cranking and it's going a jillion miles an hour, and you touch it on a piece of foam, as soon as you touch it, it's going to grab and take off like when a car burns rubber. And you're going to have to get comfortable with getting ready for when it hits and holding it back a little bit. You're not going to want to just hit and run or you're going to go flying right off the table. So you're going to get used to it. It's going to take a little while, but you're going to get comfortable using it and going nice and smooth with the direction. And we're going to show you that first. How to do simple grinding motions with the Dremel. Okay, now first, before we even do our first second of grinding, the dust mask is an absolute must when you're using a Dremel and grinding foam because let me tell you something, the dust when you use this thing goes everywhere. You'll end up with a fine layer of super fine black dust everywhere. You're going to get it on your hands when you're Dremeling. You're going to get it all over the table. It's going to get everywhere and so because of that you do not want to be breathing in dust, foam dust. So. Get yourself a good dust mask and I like to wear rubber gloves because once again this dust goes everywhere and you don't want it all over your hands because when you're holding a piece of foam and you're using the Dremel and the wheel is spinning and it's shooting dust this way it's going to shoot it all over your hand and your arm and uh, your table so definitely a dust mask and you're probably going to want to invest in a box of disposable gloves just so that you don't get this junk all over yourself. Okay, now we're going to take a look at simply grinding. Now we talked about the wheel spinning and that when the wheel spins this direction, as soon as you touch it on the foam, it's going to take off and run. And let me show you what I mean. We get it on full and we touch the side. See that? So as soon as you touch the Dremel to the edge of the foam, it's going to run because this is a wheel. So you're going to have to learn to kind of keep it from just taking off. So you're going to want to learn a smooth pattern of coming in, 
and going along with the wheel and going along with the wheel. And let me show you what I mean. And you'll get used to this. Come in. Go right along the edge. Okay, now, it was that simple. We ended up getting a nice rounded corner, and it takes you no time at all to get used to this. At first, you're gonna feel pretty awkward using it, but you'll get really used to it. You'll learn the way to hold it. You'll learn how to hold your phone. You'll learn the perfect speed you're gonna to wanna to go at, and you'll start getting into a rhythm, and you'll be doing super awesome in no time. Okay, now we're going to take a second and we're going to look at the difference between a square edge and using the Dremel to round off an edge and the difference in what a finished look it gives to your prop. So what we're going to do is we're going to build these two identical little stacks just to fake like we're doing a detail for a prop, but we're going to leave one set perfectly squared off and we're going to do another set rounded off just so you can see the difference. Nothing looks more finished and nice than a slightly rounded edge, and we'll show you what we mean as we go through this. Okay, so we have these two pieces stuck together, and we left all the edges square. Now we're going to dremel these edges and look at the difference. We smoothed off that edge. smooth edge. That is very cool. Now there's nothing wrong with this. It looks fine, but the edges are sharp. Looks like we just cut out pieces of foam and stuck it together. But when you look at this one and you look at the way the edges are rounded over, it has a more finished look to it. And what we're going to do is we'll take a second now and we'll look at this rounded off technique on a few props just to show you how it looks finished. Okay, remember when we did our video making an EVA foam ray gun? We cut our trigger and it had square edges on it and we rounded our trigger off just to give it that slight round edge and all the different pieces we cut for the handle, we rounded the edges off. So it has a soft edge around the top and it has a soft edge all the way around the bottom piece and that's just enough detail and back when we did making an EVA foam Viking axe, we used the Dremel around the edge of the head of the axe. So it just doesn't have a square edge at the top. It's, we rounded the bottom and we rounded the top. If you can tell the difference, right here we left a hard edge, but then when it got up to this part of it, we rounded it off. And we rounded off around the edge of the wood handle. So you, and when we did the handle of the pickaxe, we cut our pieces of foam from an EVA foam dowel with a clean cut on this end and a clean cut on that end. And look at the difference when we leave the sharp, clean end and we dremel around this edge for a nice soft detail. That is a really nice little finished detail. So, and that is what you're going to be using this thing for. 95% of the time is going to be smoothing off edges. Okay, now we've already talked a little bit about the wheel and the direction the wheel spins and we see that because of the arrow right there. Now when you're grinding and you go to reach a corner of something, the wheel will catch the corner and pull it if you're not going in the right direction. And what I mean is this. This is very important. If the wheel is spinning this way and we're, we're grinding in that direction. We're going to be fine until we get to the edge. And then when you get to the edge, because of the wheel grinding, it's going to catch that corner. So you always want to, you always want to go into a corner, not out of a corner. Because if you go out of a corner, it's going to grab the end and, and tear it a little bit. If you go into the corner, that's the natural way to do it. And what I mean is this. 
is if we go to the corner, you'll see how it pulls on the foam. And we head towards the end, and you get to the end. See how it did that little, oh, grabbed a hold of the end and tore it a little bit. See that? But if you go into the corner, it doesn't do that. See that? You want to go into a point. Into a corner. Like that. See that? It doesn't tear it. If you go out of the point, it'll grab it. See that? And here's another really good example of that is if you're doing spikes, if you're doing something pointed, and you go like we just talked about, and you do the wrong thing, and you go across the point this way, watch what happens. We're going to round our edges. See that? We get to the end, and look what happens. See that? It hit it, and it jerks it and tears the end. See that? The end got all tore up. We come in. We're rounding our corners off. We get to the end. See that? And it tears it. That is not what we want to do. But if you notice on this side, it doesn't tear it, it goes right in nice. So, when you go into the corner on this side, you're okay. But if you go out the other side, you're going to tear it. And the way you get around that is what we just looked at. Look at that nice point we have. And we don't want to wreck it, but we want to round the edges off. So we're going to come in, into the corner here. And into the corner here. And into the corner here. And into the corner here. Now for the point, we want to turn it around and go into the point. Look at that. Nice. Into the point. Into the point. And into the point. Okay, now what we did, look at that. We did not damage that point at all. But this one, we did. Look how tore up it is. Because we went into the point, which is good, into the point, into the point, and into the point. But then we made the mistake of going out of the point, and the spinning wheel going this way grabs the end and flips it up and tears it. This is the one we did correctly. We went into all four corners, which is the correct motion, but then we only went halfway and we turned it around and we went into the point and we used a round spinning sanding bit and we came right into the tip and look at that. We didn't damage the point a single bit, so it's super important. Do not leave a corner or a point. You go in to the corner in the point so you can spare your foam from tearing your foam up. Okay, now we're going to talk really quick about the different bits. Now you're going to find a lot of different bits. You're going to experiment with bits, you're going to find what you like to use and what you don't like to use, and you'll probably end up living off of the same couple of bits, which I do. Most of my grinding is with the smooth bit for rounding off edges because it's it doesn't tear a ton of foam off. It kind of smooths it and rounds it and you can take your time and sculpt with it and it's really gentle and smooth. On the other hand, you have this monster that's like a super rough piece of sandpaper. This thing is like a buzzsaw tearing through foam. This shreds foam, makes a ton of, of messy dust all over the place, but when you need to tear off a lot of foam, you use this bad boy right here because this thing, like I said, this is a buzzsaw. This tears foam up like crazy. So we've got the super rough bit and we've got the smooth bit. Now, Okay, what we're going to do next is we're going to show you an example of the two different wheels and how they handle on foam. We're going to start with the rough bit. Look at that. That sounded like a that sounded like a power saw. That chewed that entire corner off with just one pass. Because this bit is super rough. Now when we go in with the smooth bit, we're going to do this opposite side and we're going to do one single pass. Look at the difference. 
That absolutely chewed that foam out like crazy with the rough bit. But then when you flip over to this side, look at that with the smooth bit. A nice smooth corner. Huge difference between these two bits. But there's a purpose for both and we're going to look at that now. Now you can use the super rough bit to really clean that up and let's take a look at that real quick. Get it going. Look at how that takes those marks. That goes all the way down. Look at that. That is insane. That is a beast. That tore off all that chunked up foam and gave us a perfectly smooth edge. That is nuts. Now we're going to come in with the smooth bit. Look at that. Wow, that is nice and smooth. We went in with the super rough bit to tear out a ton of material. Then we went in with the smoother bit to smooth it out. Basic little lesson on the difference between the super rough bit that tears out a ton of material and the smooth bit that's a much smoother, more finesse wheel. Okay, now the last thing we want to talk about is all of this. Gloves to keep your hands from being covered with dust. Dust mask must because you do not want to be breathing in EVA foam dust. It is not good for your lungs. And if you're going to be doing dremeling, when you have a section of your prop that needs to be dremeled, when you're done, time out, take five, make sure you have yourself a really nice shop brush to clean your table off because let me tell you something, you do not want your table, you do not want your workspace getting all junky and full of rubble and debris. You want your workspace kept clean. So wear gloves, wear a dust mask, and take a break after you Dremel and use your shop brush to keep your table clean. Okay, so that's a basic overview on the Dremel. It's a rotary grinding tool that we use to grind off the corners and make them round and smooth on all of our props. We use this on almost every single build. Um, adds a nice finished look with rounded corners and you're going to pick up your own tips and techniques as you start getting used to this. Don't be intimidated because at first you might feel a little awkward, but you're going to get really used to it. Working with it's going to become nothing for you. And uh, like I said, you're going to end up with your own special tips and techniques you like to use. You're going to end up loving your own special set of bits that you like to work with. And hey, it's whatever works for you. That's the deal. Whatever's good for you. Um, so that's it. That concludes uh, EVA Foam Dremeling Basics. Uh, hope you liked it. If you did, give us a like and uh, share us with a friend and subscribe to this channel. And together we're going to go step by step through a lot more super cool builds so that you get the props you deserve. Thanks for coming. See you next time.